Today, Precarious Plays... Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. We can do the swears! <laughs> yes, we can. We can do the swears again! I'm confident that this scenario is not what these were designed for. Uh-huh. But, oh, wow, are they incredibly useful. These little recaps of what's going on in the story. Yeah. Because I sat down and I was like, oh, good. I'm going to have to remember, one, what we do when we sit down to do the show. Because I never remember. <laughs> like, I, I say that pretty often. Like, what do we do on the show? That's not a goof. I honestly... You're like, I don't remember what the conversation do the words happens together yeah or like sequential yes but also just grab bag of noises yeah 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 so we need to get cleared by the on staff psychologist and we need to check to make sure are any of our um side quests due to expire oh man i heard oh, the best I heard the best joke today, and I could not possibly do it justice. Yeah. I just want... But you're going to try anyway? No, I'm going to recommend people look it up so that they can hear it performed correctly. The only thing that I'm hesitating on is whether or not I give away the punchline. I think I don't give away the punchline. I think that that's the plan. Oh, wait, was it about the moth? Yes, it's about the moth <sighs> that goes to the podiatrist. Okay, uh, how does someone find this joke? You look up the joke about the moth that goes to the podiatrist. That's, That's all. Enough. I think that that should be enough. Um, the actor that most famously delivered it. Uh, shoot, what was, what was his name? Good man, funny man. Good man, funny. Good man, funny. Good man, funson. Um, I'm cheating right now to find out, but it had me laughing for a while, and it had me laughing before the punchline because it's one of those long walk jokes. Oh yeah. I love. Long walk jokes. Okay. Norm MacDonald is the actor most famous for delivering this joke in a number of places. He pretty funny dude. Anyways, that made my whole day today. I love a good bad joke. Uh, you know Tegna Taro? Mm-hmm. She's also famous for delivering a bad joke. She didn't even deliver the bad joke. She has a stand-up set. You know what? I feel like I'm on a very serious tangent about jokes, but I was just really happy because it popped into my head and I started to chuckle again. Uh, Tig Notaro had a stand-up special uh, at a very big theater that has like huge comedy events. And she brought up her, I think her mother-in-law, to tell a joke. Because the way that her mother-in-law tells the joke, combined with how Tig introduces the joke and her presence on stage, just makes the situ situation like fall out awkward, hilarious. And it's a terrible joke. But it's just so funny because of the context and the delivery. And it breaks, like, every rule of comedy, mm -hmm. of stand-up comedy. Yeah. Are you remembering the story? I am. Okay. Look that up, too. Anyways. Ugh. Had a good comedy day today. What are we doing again? Trying to... I'm going to put off talking to the psychiatrist for a bit. Oh, that's why I remembered. And I'm going to try to find Smiley, I think. Smiley's on the second floor in the same general area as the understandably nervous conspiracy man. Mm-hmm. Smiley. 
Where are you? What's oh. happening? No, we'll just ignore it. There was a game under, it was developed under stress. We'll be cool. Yeah, I will. Oh. I will be cool. I just had to. You know, these jokes have made me feel very thankful. Because sometimes life is not so fun. Uh, but the brief relief provided from comedy is helpful to sort of catch one's breath. Hmm. Deceased. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just feeling very thankful today. No, you know, oh wait, hold on, oh, I remember. Nope, 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 nope. He gets his own lab because mm. I'm pretty sure that he is the forensics man, which means, uh, hold on. Ma'am? Ma'am? Ma'am, ma'am? Pardon me, ma'am? Look at that. It's oh, beautiful. It's, so it's sort of glitching out too, isn't it? No. That's a glitch. Yeah. Man, back to back. That's unfortunate. Still, I wanted to look at the, the front because I saw like the gold streak. It's cool. Yeah. The rumpled. It's it's interesting that talk that... to her. A word of advice: stay off the Og rights web pages this week. Okay. It's interesting that that can even happen because to yeah. me, to me, that says that. I don't know. I think that somebody probably went with a more complicated solution than was strictly necessary. Mm-hmm. Although I did notice. Whenever we were trying to look at a lady earlier uh, in the series. Yeah, she was wearing blue on blue. Yeah. Uh, I think that that might be a, a product. Like, you might be able to, to see it if you, I don't know. Like, I could leer and make it very obvious. Mm -hmm. That feels a little weird. Uh, the women that have outfits where it... It's reasonable. Whenever they start doing that sprint like that, mm -hmm. they have breast physics enabled. Oh. Hmm. And I wonder if it's just all part of the same sort of simple physics system. Yeah, they're just like, everything wavers a little bit when you move around if it's more than this big and made out of this material. Yeah, and actually, you know what I, you know what I should check? What? Hold on, let me... Does Adam has it on his coat as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. At least on like the bottom. Like the chest of his coat, too. Like the, the flaps. Really up there? Yeah, I... That I, looks pretty solid. No, it bounces. See? Oh, yeah, just under the, the sternum. Yeah. I was looking at up at the collar. Like that area. It does stretch the collar a little tiny bit, but it bounces right at the sternum. You know, but roughly at boob level. The Any changes to the collar... It's probably hand and hand and hand animated. Wow, to make sure that it doesn't get caught up in his super pointy chin. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it does kind of make me a little curious if anybody's ever had that sort of cloth fuck up mm -hmm. with one of these ladies' boobs. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> which would be poor dear. Which would be really funny to see. <laughs> it would be funny to see. I remember so Mass Effect 3, which I played all the way through. Right. As well in established. Mass Effect 3, which is the one with the shadow broker. Um N No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just all in right. case you were wondering. Yeah. Liara, one time when we were fighting some big boss. I think it was the fake shadow broker. We were fighting the fake shadow broker and we were in an arena and Liara, who I can't remember why she was there because she wasn't on our team. She, if you were in the... She was like a guest star. Yeah, in the layer of the shadow broker DLC, she's a temporary party okay. member. Yes, so then I remember she wrapped herself around the banister of a staircase during the fight. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> There's a Krogan right here <laughs> trying to eat me. You're supposed to be helping. I'm like, way to sleep on the job. 
But I did like pause the game while it was happening so that I could stop to laugh because I was in the middle of a boss fight. And so I brought up the targeting wheel so that I could look around and just absorb. Because, you know, Mass Effect 3, <coughs> 2 was pretty glitchy from a lot of reports. And I never, I never find the glitches. I never see them. Mm -hmm. Everyone else sees them. But I'm like, everything is perfect and beautiful. I finally saw a really obnoxious glitch. Yeah. And I just wanted to soak it in. Was it the kind where, did she go all spidery? Yeah, and, and she the was limb, a like, ribbon. Yeah, the, the limbs get um. It was really wrong. stretched out and with like really harsh <laughs> geometry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it fixed itself very rapidly after, but it happened and it was happening for long enough for me to wonder, where's Liara? Oh, I see she's decorating there, the banister. A little over there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how's it going? Do you have the scan? Yeah, it's right here. You're a lifesaver, Adam. Seriously, Miller was in a foul mood when he left here. I don't need to give him another excuse to chew me out. He left. Where'd he go? Didn't ask. Didn't think he wanted me to know. Did those state police jerks give you any grief? I'm sorry, this isn't funny. They didn't seem to be in a talkative mood, so I left them alone. See? Without my expert advice, you might be dead right now, Adam. A stitch in time saves nine. So what's on the scan? Oh, that. I have no idea. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. You told me you found something, something big. I didn't say I knew what it was, Adam. I said it was something that could blow this case wide open. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not buying this whole arc did it angle. I believe what the evidence tells me. This DSD has all the answers we need, from the chemical makeup of the explosive used down to the material in the victim's clothing. I'm sure of it. Okay, so how long until we're all sure of it? Oh, it it'll take hours to sift through the data. A and I'm seeing Sonya later to apologize for any issues I may have caused with the state police. Uh, plus, I do have other cases to work on, too, Adam. I'll let you know if I... When I find something. Let's me do that. Take it easy. All right. Jensen, has Ozen cleared you for duty? Haven't spoken to her yet. The sooner you get it done, the sooner we can close this case. Call me when you're ready to go. Mm. I thought that you unlocked the ability to use all of your augments without penalty pretty early on. I hope that I don't have to go all the way through Golem. Um, before I can have all of those unlocked, uh, guilt-free. Mm-hmm. Because that's really what it is, I think. I, I don't think that there's a huge, uh, mechanical penalty. Mm-hmm. I do want to take just a moment. Mm-hmm. To remember one final glitch that I was able to witness. I was not playing. You were playing. Yeah. It was Red Dead Redemption. I was gonna... Okay. Yeah. It was of the vertical... It was a... Um, <laughs> An unplanned no, no, ascent? <laughs> no. It was a VTOL stagecoach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was just all of a sudden... Oh. I know exactly <laughs> where it was. So it was the original Red Dead Redemption, and it's in this tiny little sort of uh, swamp town, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's not really like, it doesn't feel like it's next to an ocean. It feels like it's next to a swamp, but it's it's this tiny little, like, not a port city, a pier city. Yeah. It's a little pier town. And very very quietly this cart behind me starts to shake and shimmy and then out of nowhere it and the horse just both shoot into the sky VTOL and then land somewhere eventually Adam I'm Delaro Zen I appreciate you coming in to speak with me and well I know you're probably getting this from everyone today but I need to ask are you okay I've seen footage from the train station but being there must have is that what this is about? No, that was sympathy. This is a standard agent health interview to determine combat readiness. Here, I got you this from the dispensary. You got me neuropazine? Look, Doc, I was caught off guard by a terrorist attack. Might have knocked some things out of whack, but it doesn't mean my body's gonna start rejecting my augments. True, 
but traumatic experiences can kick a hornet's nest into the immune system. In patients with neuroprosthetics... Would you believe me if I told you my body doesn't reject mechanical implants? <laughs> no. But my policy is for straight talk only in the room, so if you want me to believe that you're some kind of medical miracle, I guess I'll have to go with it. Please, have a seat. I've been he looking doesn't, over by the file. way. Mm -hmm. There's some very or interesting they history. don't. His body doesn't. Mind if we take a yeah. trip down memory lane? Is this gonna take long? It says here that you were with Detroit SWAT. Oh, that's unfortunate. Left in 26 to yeah. help Seraph Industries Security Division. David Seraph was at the center of America's augmentation debate. Yeah, she's a psychiatrist. Why wouldn't you disclose stuff? Do we trust her? Because well, that, yeah, I wish she hadn't asked me that. No, I don't trust her because if I remember correctly, remember how at the start of the series I said that one of the frustrating parts of a conspiracy game compared to like a, a conspiracy film mm -hmm. is that a film you that get the, the problem is introduced but then resolved by the end of the film so clarity on a subject you you can get there much more quickly right yeah here they might drop hints throughout and then it might be 30 hours later whenever they do a big reveal and then I'm supposed to care about that you know you're a double agent right at least you should turn the tables we'll we'll act we'll act a muck okay well <laughs> i think that adam just he doesn't really seem to want to be talking to this person anyway yeah and he is he's a a private eye police officer type himself so i think that he would be confrontational and turn the tables anyway. He's like, I'm just gonna go to my apartment and eat my cereal with bourbon like usual. You just have things. to deal with it. Yeah, yeah, too bad. It's a lifestyle. Yeah, we'll turn the tables in the next episode. I just want to conclude today by saying that I'm pretty sure she's an antagonist. Mm. And I think that the game actually closes by revealing that and until I did sort of like a wiki dive after playing the game, mm -hmm. I had actually forgotten about her full stop. Oh. I forgot because you meet her here so early in the game. And I I don't know. I feel like the developers might not have had an appropriate appreciation for the volume of information a video game throws at you over the over its entire length yeah or maybe maybe they just uh maybe they knew maybe they have a better understanding than i do because the fact that i could go to a wiki and have a bunch of stuff laid out maybe that was their expectation i don't agree with that i i kind of hate that actually mm-hmm but who knows, maybe it moved a few more units because people want to engage in an online community where they're like unraveling all of this junk. I mean, stuff, whatever. <laughs> Three <laughs> dismissive words in a row. <laughs> 10 out of 10 shade. I didn't do it on purpose. Oh, I know. That's why it's more funny.